Uh, Chris Potter is here. He's a community organizer. He's uh, for rights and democracy. He's from Manchester, and he says he's currently undecided as well. Hi, Chris. Hey, Mr. Yang. Welcome back to New Hampshire. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Chris. Uh, I absolutely love New Hampshire. Uh, this is my home. It is under threat from climate change, though. We already have regularly sunny day flooding on the seacoast. Our winter sports industry is under threat. I'm worried that our whole ecosystem will be destabilized within my lifetime. So given that fossil fuel use is the primary driver of climate change, what will you do to phase out fossil fuels as quickly as possible? Well, thank you for the question, Chris. I actually went to high school here in the state. I graduated from Phillips Exeter Academy in 1992, and my first time skiing was here in the state. So when you talk about how transforming climate is actually going to gut some of the tourism industries here in the state, those are actually some of my finest childhood memories. Climate change is devastating regional economies right here in New Hampshire. When I was in Portsmouth, I saw buildings that were flooding regularly. I saw a shrimping business that was shrinking fast because the warming waters are killing the shrimp. So we have to acknowledge that we're already on the curve of climate change. When politicians talk about preventing climate change, I get frustrated because you can't prevent something that is already here and having disastrous effects around the country. So I would zero out the billions and billions of dollars of subsidies that are going to these fossil fuel companies that are way, way past their sell-by date. I would take those subsidies, move them to wind and solar, and then I would put a price on carbon immediately so that polluters actually have to pay into a system that will help reduce emissions. The toughest part of this, Chris, is that the United States of America is only 15% of global emissions. So even if we were to aggressively get our emissions down, you're still going to face a warming planet over time because 85% of emissions are coming from outside our borders. And what's happening in Africa right now is that China is showing up with coal burning power plants and saying, what do you think? And then what is the African government saying in response? Yes, I'll take it, because they don't care about emissions. They just want energy as cheaply as possible. So if we're going to get our arms around this problem in a realistic way, we have to be at that table with the African government saying, do not take this coal burning power plant. Take these solar panels instead, and we will subsidize them to the level where it will be a no-brainer for you. That's the direction we need to go, and that's where I would lead as president. You have you got two young sons, right? How old are they? Yes, yeah, so I have two uh, young boys, Chris, Christopher and Damien. They're seven and four. Okay, so they're going to be dealing with the climate crisis more than our generation. Do you talk to them about it? And if so, how do you do that? I have not talked to them about climate change yet. Uh, my, my kids are kind of oblivious, honestly. I tell them that Daddy has a very big deadline on Tuesday. <laughs> and he'll be traveling. Uh, so right now, they don't even know that I'm running for president or I have a real understanding of what that means. They but are just, you gonna talk to, because this, this is something that you'll have to talk to them, like, you know, you gotta talk about the birds and the bees. You're probably gonna have to talk to them about climate change. Have you decided, have you thought about that? Don, Don, where are you get these parents? <laughs> <laughs> it's like birds and the bees, my kids are seven and four. What are you talking about? Uh, I mean, I, I think at this point, Many children will be exposed to lessons about climate change during their school, yeah. in, a, in elementary school, grade school. But if they don't know by the time they get to a certain age, of course I'll sit down with them and let them know that we have left them a total mess and we are sorry and daddy's going to do his best to clean it up for them and every other family in this country. All right. Are all y'all paying attention? Automation gonna sweep the nation unless we get him in. Andrew Yang, 2020 Freedom Dividend. Climate change is real again. Science rules. Teachers bringing home some bread. Medicare for every citizen. That's nice. Andrew Yang.